Welcome to the Cruise Retreat Podcast. Hi, I'm Rita Perez, and I'm a travel advisor specializing in, you guessed it, cruise ship retreats. This podcast is for service-based entrepreneurs and corporate decision makers to learn more about staying everyone's favorite company with a cruise ship retreat. Ready to increase your client or employee retention? Listen in on this week's show. Welcome back to the River Cruise Retreat Series. Almost forgot my title there. We are going to be talking about packing for a river cruise because it is very similar but also different to an ocean cruise. Similarities, I would say, include you do want to have one outfit for the day and then one outfit for nighttime. But also, I feel like there's so much like hustle and bustle that does happen on river cruises that I found myself a lot of the time, just whatever I wore during the day, I kind of wore it into the night as well. Um, My travel buddy was telling me that she normally just wears black pants during the day and then changes out her top during the nighttime for dinner time. So I was like, huh, I may do something. Like, I think I'm just going to bring a pair of black slacks with me for nighttime and then maybe just a couple different tops to to prepare with me and I have a couple dresses it is summertime and the last time I went on a river cruise it was December so this is gonna be two totally different packing experiences I'm glad that it's not so much like heavy sweaters Uh, One of the great things about river cruising, though, is that their laundry services are a little bit more affordable. And that's what I had done because I'm a bigger girl, I'm a bigger size, so my clothes is bigger, meaning that it takes up more space in my luggage when I'm packing. Especially when you're talking about winter clothes and all the different accessories that you need for wintertime. Your sweaters, your under, your undershirts, your long johns, the fuzzy socks that you need, the big boots that you need. That takes a lot of space. And this time I'm trying to go very light in my packing. For one, I don't want to pack too much stuff, even though when I did my Christmas time cruise, I did wear everything that I brought with me and I wore it multiple times because I was able to get it laundered on board. This time I'm I'm hoping to do a lot of more mixing and matching and kind of like just bring a couple tops, bring a couple bottoms, and then also incorporate a couple of dresses because I would not have worn dresses during the winter time, but at least now I get to be like a little bit more girly and wear a couple different dresses on my summertime cruise, which is a huge, huge plus. Other things that I'm noting is that of course we are still in our crazy COVID times, so I bought in Europe, you need to have, they. there's a lot of places that don't accept cloth masks as a suitable mask. So I went ahead and I bought this pack of, I think it's like 25 face masks, masks off of Amazon, the N95 masks. So I have those with me. I'm also going to be buying a lot of like hand sanitizer wipes so that when we are out and about, um, I'm able just to sanitize a little bit if we're not going to be around um you know bathrooms that we'll be able to wash our hands and that's one of the cool things about river cruising that i will say is that you're not always out and about they do have longer excursions but they for the most part their excursions are only a couple of hours Meaning like a typical, this could be a typical day for you where you're having breakfast and then you go out on your first tour. Then a couple hours later you come back and you have lunch on the ship and maybe you're cruising to your next destination. So you get to relax on the ship for a little bit. Then we stop in the next port. You do a an excursion on board. You come back, eat dinner, and then you have some nightly entertainment brought to you. So it is... It, There is a lot to do on river cruising. You will not be bored, but they do like to kind of break up the day because all of your meals are included on board, which is amazing. And you want to eat the onboard food because it's fantastic. And they do bring local cuisine on board also. Okay, I'm digressing again. So packing wise, Um, I am trying to bring, like, limit the amount, and thank goodness again that this is a summertime cruise. I want to bring sandals, but comfortable sandals, but also sandals that look kind of cute. 
So I have heard a lot of really great things about Bionic sandals, so I've invested in one pair already. If you have any tips or other shoe brands, I'm thinking about maybe getting some Skechers also, but I don't wanna bring too many pairs of shoes, shoes with me because one, I'm not that type of person, and two, that's valuable real estate in your baggage. So, oh, speaking of baggage, what I am planning to bring with me this time around is a, and the other thing as a person that is on a special diet, I have to remember I have to pack food and snacks for me, especially for travel days. I'm not too concerned on the river cruise about finding good food because they're going to be able to tailor things to me. But on my travel days, like flight days and just having snacks available, I need to make sure that I'm on top of that. So that is also going to take some real estate in my baggage. I am planning currently right now, I am planning to bring a, my Samantha Brown carry-on bag, which has lots of different crannies for storage. So thank you, Samantha Brown. I have a 31 tote bag that is very large, but also fits under the seat. Um, and I think I'm going to pack that with the most of my snacks. And then I have like a rolling duffel bag that I think I'm going to check in because with the souvenirs that I'm bringing, the carry-on alone is not going to be good. But I'm trying to avoid bringing like the big 26 inch, but I'm also kind of like maybe I should just bring the 26 inch for extra bag security for me, like just to make sure I have extra space. So um, I was able to take a week's worth of clothes to Puerto Rico in my carry-on as well as different snacks and things with the 31 bag recently. So I think I can do it for Europe, especially if I had that extra duffel bag, but I also don't want to sell myself short because I am also a notorious uh, <laughs> overpacker. <laughs> I need to go to Overpackers Anonymous. What else am I, oh, a sun hat. I want to bring a packable sun hat because as someone who did not like wearing hats before, kind of like knowing the importance, especially like with sun care and protection, I'm kind of like, I don't want to get sunburn on this trip. So um, I am going to make sure that I pack a sun hat, something that looks a little bit stylish, but I also don't want to look like one of those, you know, the Instagrammers in the hat. Like I don't want to look cliche. Like I just want to look like a normal, natural <laughs> traveler. <laughs> The European outlets are different than our American outlets. So I think here in America, we're 110 volts, where in Europe is 220 volts. So you want to keep an eye on that. Like I try and buy a lot of electronics or charger type things that already have the converter in them. So I don't have to bring a separate converter with me. So I think my flat iron, which I haven't used too much, and I don't know if I'll use it. I'm definitely bringing my hair dryer with me because I don't like the standard hair dryers that some places include. Uh, my hair dryer is dual voltage, so I don't have to worry about that when I go. What I will have to worry about is that Europe has different prongs, like the plugs. So you know how in the States, like if you're looking at something like plugging into a wall, ours are very flat. The European ones are round. So they do like, and for very low cost, you can buy something that you snap onto the flat ones that give it the two round prongs so it'll fit and you can plug in and charge your items in European plugs. That's gonna be especially helpful for like hotels. I think some hotels and even like this river cruise line does have the flat plugs, but I would just bring a couple of the round plugs because I mean, we all are gonna have at least a cell phone with us your employees or clients mean the world to you so why don't you show them the world and a thing or two if you're ready to take your cruise retreat idea to a working plan you need the cruise retreat toolkit filled with calculators templates timelines and more the toolkit will get you five steps closer to your cruise ship retreat and as a result of the retreat, more dedicated and motivated employees or clients. Grab it now at cruiseretreattoolkit.com and save $20 with the code PODCAST. There's going to be different things that we're going to have to utilize with those different like round plugs and you don't want to be sorry and not be able to utilize a plug because you don't have the right prongs. So bonus tip there. Uh, 
I am going to make sure that I pack the correct currency. So that's actually on my to-do list. On my last river cruise, I did not get currency ahead of time because the last time I had been to Europe, which was a very long time ago, it felt pretty easy to me to exchange money. But on a river cruise, there are so many things that it's like, go, go, go. So while there is some downtime to relax while we're cruising, when you're in port, there's just so much to see and your tours include so much and you don't want to miss out. Like I remember wanting to like see so much of this Christmas market, but I couldn't, I had to like go ahead and take a couple minutes out to exchange my currency. And I don't want to do that this time. Like I don't want to waste time having to exchange money. Sometimes the airports when you land, and that's what I was able to do when I landed in Budapest, is I was able to convert money while I was waiting for my checked bag to come out a baggage check. But then on the different, because in some parts of Europe, not everybody uses euros, which, you know, it is nice and convenient for the parts that do use euros. But you have to like maintain, because there were three sets of currency that I used, because Hungary had one. Then Austria and Germany had another, and then the Czech Republic had another currency. And it was kind of a pain to switch from all the currencies back and forth. So I think what I'm going to do this time is contact who I bank with to be like, hey, I need X amount of this currency and X amount of this currency so that I can have it prepared and not worry. I also have different travel credit cards that I hope to utilize for, you know, that extra sense of protection. Um, but also, they one of my travel credit cards has a no foreign transaction fee, which, ugh, that's another one. Like, if you have credit cards, because that kind of gets you to them having to convert on your bank having to convert. So if you can get a credit card or have a credit card or check to see if your credit card does no foreign transaction fees and that kind of helps save you a little bit of money there too. So yeah, currency, I'm planning to pack currency. What are other things? So some of the things that I have to be mindful of are that we're, so it's a marketing masterclass that I'm gonna be going on and we need to wear, you know, more solids, which kind of hurts my little, my little pattern heart because I love patterns so, so much. I'm looking for, because River Cruise Lines are an elevated experience, so it's not like really a jean and t-shirt type atmosphere. It is a little bit more elevated. So I've been looking for, especially for summertime, more, you know, nicer tops. And not like extremely fancy tops, but not super casual either. I'm looking at having more capri pants and Bermuda shorts and the nice sandals and um, more casual looking sneakers with me. Casual but up updated sneakers. So you have to keep that in mind too, that the atmosphere is not totally casual, but is it is definitely not uptight either. I would like to think of it as kind of like, what would you wear? I know a lot of people say country club casual, but I've never been to a country club. So I compare it to kind of like Sunday dress. Like whenever we went to church, maybe not as elevated as that, but it's also, I'm not bringing clothes that I'm going to be lounging around and working at home all day either. So you, you kind of have to find that, that happy medium. I have my travel on messenger bag that I'm going to be bringing with me. I love traveling with messenger bags because I think it gives like that, um, it, it's both worlds. You can see it as a little bit elevated or you can see it as a casual bag. I really love the brand Travel On because they do a lot of like travel protective type bags. So there's RFID technology to protect like all of your important cards that you'll be taking with you. There are the straps have built in wiring inside. So if you happen to ha like collide with someone who wants to do something mischievous, they won't be able to, you know, slash your purse because of that special wiring that's already built inside. So a lot of people like like to slash the 
straps in order to kind of like take your purse from you, they're not gonna be able to do that with this. Same thing, like the main compartment has this special lock zipper on it. So um, if they think they can be like, oh, I'm just gonna slip my hand in here. No, they're not gonna be able to do that. As long as you use that locking feature. There are two zippers that don't have that feature. So I'm not gonna like put important stuff on those. It's probably gonna be reserved for, you know, like mints or chapstick or hand sanitizers. So I recommend that, especially when you're traveling and I, I really think that's it. Oh, packing cubes. Real estate is very important like and limited on river cruise lines. So the I would say that that's probably one of the biggest downsides of cruising on the river versus cruising on an ocean. On an ocean, you still have a lot of space in your cabin. There's not that much space on river cruise ships. And that's because the river cruise ships have to be very narrow because there are locks on the, on the rivers that kind of like help with water levels depending on what part of the river that you're on. And the locks are very, very slim. So when you think of river ships, you're gonna see like these long but skinny river ships. And for that reason, like real estate, as far as like storing things, is going to be very important. So I already love organizing my items with packing cubes, but I think this is going to just be an extra bonus having packing cubes. Like you can go ahead, put the carry on, slide it underneath your bed, and then just live out of the packing cubes for the week that you're on board. I think that is really it as far as some of my packing tips. If I remember any more about river cruise packing, I'll be sure to include them. But if you have any questions, of course, send them my way. I would be so happy to help you out. And I hope you've enjoyed this third episode in our river cruise series. Thank you for joining me on the cruise retreat podcast. Please subscribe and leave the show a rating on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to take a look at the show notes for important information and links. See you next week.